Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my next video and we were talking about uh, Uber Eats clone. In the last video we have done the simple authentication using Google and this is the next video on top of that. Now as we are talking about uh, social authentication using Google, Firebase, Twitter, Instagram or GitHub. I want to talk as about this video, a simple video which talks only about authentication because these days there are many solutions available and people people oftenly like developers oftenly get confused okay what to choose what not to choose how to use and i mean they all are same things at the end and we get confused okay how this is being used what are the different libraries how they really works those are the some some different and most important questions even before implementing next auth or firebase or auth0 or ssoml or uh, authentication with Okta or just using a passwordless auth authentication or OTP based simple authentication in the react app using a simple Firebase Auth0 or Google Auth or a simple authentication in the Next.js application with the Next Auth or in the SwellKit application using Auth0 so there are lots of solutions available lots of libraries available but they all talks about same thing I mean most of these solutions are uh, token based authentication mechanism I mean the approaches are different but the end at the end they are doing the same thing back in those days like if you remember we were doing a simple username password authentication this is our client this is my react app so this is my react app what I'm doing is this is doing a simple authentication by username password and this is my API Checking okay username password is available in the database. Okay, this is my database. If everything is correct, then it will just return a token or a session through different forms. Either it can just give you some token in the response or it will send you the cookies back. Right? Or it will initialize the express session if you are using Node.js. So there are different ways of managing the sessions. Most of the in most of these technologies, we use a token-based authentication where once the API validates the credentials, it returns the token. But then we we moved away from this approach. What we started doing is okay, we don't want users to enter their username, password. They already have their accounts on some social providers, and if I talk about what all different social providers we have is you can see the list next auth get started and if you see the providers here you can do login with all these uh, providers I mean, i haven't heard of all these names netlify github google gitlab uh, microsoft discord dropbox these are some of the common but there are many more like you have already have account on the Apple or Atlassian Jira or Microsoft then you can use that account to log into your other application and that all happens through the social provider authentication that uses a simple auth protocol and if you remember this is like okay this we were doing 10 years back that time the social authentication was not that much famous i will say and then what we started doing is okay i don't want to i don't want user to enter the username password we moved away from this a little bit and what we started saying is react app i'm going to use here the firebase or auth0 or maybe some social provider which is going to give me this token so it is adopting the auth protocol and here the react app and react app will use the client id so here let's say i'm using a google as a provider example so this google is a provider for me like in the firebase you are doing a sign in with a google so at the react app what you will do you will provide a client id and you will use this uh, google auth uh, react library to create a simple button login with a google right this is okay okay right 
this is what you will do is log in with google this is simple logic you will implement on your front end and what it will do is sorry for the typo oh man so what it will do is when you click on to this it will take you to the login screen of google and you will select a you will give a consent okay i want to share my account information to this application which has been configured by this user for this react app it may be a medical app or anything right i'm giving consent to the google to share my information to this medical app okay it will share it and then this google will give the token to co token back to this application so indirectly what you are doing you are actually managing the session at the client side and how you are validating your session at the back end the same library with the same library you will use a client id and the client secret here and this library provides a verify token method this verify token method because once you logged in you got the token you will start sending this token to the apis through the authorization right or maybe inside a cookies so this auth header authorization header you will send start sending to the apis and now api needs to validate and how we are validating is because we are using same google app google uh, credential app which is giving you the client id and secret id at the server side we will verify that this token has been generated by same client id client secret or not and this is how the whole things are working now if we talk about google firebase i mean you can use google log authentication with the firebase or you can just independently use firebase and google also similarly there are other providers like auth0 auth0 and many more like github twitter all are like in the same line they provide their client ids uh, client id you will configure at the client side then they will give you a button okay login with the twitter that has nothing to do with the server when you click on it it will take you to the twitter consent screen then it will take you back to the application and your application has the token till now we haven't done anything on the server side the server side only is doing a validating the token that's it this is mainly the client centric approach at the client side you are doing most of the things because this is all client centric now if you talk about the same thing i will uh, give a, another example and then we will talk about it because back in those days we were also doing something different and what that is copy and paste it oh it's not allowing me to copy paste let me just copy okay so this is another, another diagram what we are doing here is we were not doing anything at the client side so in the last video i haven't done anything about uh, uh, login with the google using uh, firebase on the client side nothing 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 we will just see what we are doing here so at the client side i am just going this is the api right at this api side what i am doing is i do have a two api routes this i you I, I was doing like four years earlier when we were the, we were having this node.js passport node twitter passport node google passport and all we were creating the two api routes so like api auth google and then we were doing api auth google callback or redirect so these api routes we are defining at the server side so what we will do is from this app there will be a simple button html button okay when you click on to this button we will take you to this api route api v1 google right what this route will do is this route will give you the google consent screen because you are asking for this api route and in api route we are already handling this case that will give you the consent screen and then once you say okay i am giving you the access to this data then what it will do next is it will redirect you to this another api callback route this we need to configure at uh, google console okay this is my 
you can this is my callback route okay this callback route is also your api route through this callback route you are getting the data from coming from google so google is providing i mean whatever the provider you are using giving you the data back now this callback you can do the authentication okay this data is there now google user has a google account and this is the data i can store the data in my apis i can store my data in my apis database so here we are going to have some database because this is what we are doing here go uh, login with the google i will try to make it a little short so we can manage lots of things in a small space and here this callback we are defining in the apis only that api will check okay this user exists or not otherwise just create this user in the system okay. let me move this diagram to a little bit this side okay now this is more clear so medical app you will give a simple html javascript button that will give, take you to the api route that will give you the consent screen you get the data this data you will check okay data is valid and you will create your own token once you store the data in the database you will create your own token and send it back so this is a little bit different approach right now here we are not going to send a token there are many approaches what we need to do because it's all started from the front end app and end up to the api route so how can we initialize the session at the client side what we can do is we can initialize the we can set the cookies and we can do a response dot redirect because people get confused with this approach how we can initialize the session where the server is sending the custom token so we can just do response dot redirect to the front end route and add that route either react or angular you will check okay cookies has the authorization header fetch the user data from the apis go back here and fetch the user data because i now have headers auth session is there because i recently got the cookies so this is how you will initialize the the session using this approach and this approach was quietly wide popular because we were using these node passport module where we were defining the api route user is clicking on to the button taking us to the consent screen of github google twitter uh, after giving consent data is coming back to the other, another callback api route that is handling the data okay either you can create the data in your database and create a custom token or just send the token generated by google and all to the client we are creating custom token we are also synchronizing that user in our database because we want to have the user copied in our database so we are storing that in our database also once that is done uh, there is some scrolling problem on this excel row okay so once you get the token once you get the data you synchronize and you just generate a cookies and redirect to the front end route so because both these applications this might be running on subdomain like hello.domain.com and this might be running on api.hello.com right so both are running on different domains cookies can be shared you will redirect to the the front end uh, page hello.domain.com forward slash uh, session and there you already got the cookies so you will bootstrap the application by checking if cookies is there fetch the user data from the apis and i really like this approach this was the second approach and we are using this approach in our platform so this is our second approach uh, the second highlighted section you can see and uh, we are familiar with this approach okay most of the things we are doing at the server side we are doing a redirection to the front end sending some cookies because this is subdomain hello.domain.com and api.domain.com so from here we are setting some cookies so based on that we can initialize the session at the client side okay so but uh, these solutions are like good for when you are writing react app swelled js app and uh, angular app means client side rendered application but when it comes to the ssr then things uh, becomes a little bit uh, complex 
or you can say not that easy which we think right why because with ssr lots of things get changed from what we are doing so let's say if we are using simple ssr solution what will change in that case let me move this diagram so yes okay so with ssr we are not going to write react app uh, we will be writing a next js app or swelled kit app or something ssr whatever the application you see all around uh, us like currently i see the next js and swelled kit are uh, the credible candidate next js is also there so here you can't just uh, do it in a simpler in this way because this is all server side you may and may not need the apis also so what we are doing if you think about this next js we are writing the front end component and the server side components and now with lots of authentication solutions which are available because i remember i faced lots of challenges when i was integrating next js with the auth0 and a swell kit with the auth0 first time because that time there was no much uh, support of these libraries were available so how we are doing it right, right now because next js is server side rendered here it's just these are the client side component same library is providing a session at the server side let's say i have this at the server side in that case we were still able to manage that with auth0 because auth0 library supports those kind of api routes so whenever you click on okay login what it is doing is at the server side we were defining these particular api routes which were handling the callbacks and initializing the session at the server side and the same session was managed at the client side because the components because the application is single simple it's a single application which we see here it's not, not like two different applications we are dealing with it's like same application which has a server side component and a client side component from the client side you trigger the authentication mechanism and at the server side apis we are handling the, the session through the api routes and the session is being shared from the server side component and the client side component so now there are many solutions available in the same uh, section like uh, I have used this next auth. What it does is it provides these different adapters. If we look into the getting started, how we are doing it, we are simply attaching the providers. The, so you can attach the social providers like GitHub, Google, Twitter, Auth0, and all. And then it also provides the adapters with the, the providers that you can also manage the data. Like you can uh, attach the Prisma adapters. So once you log in with the google twitter facebook you will also get the session data you can also synchronize that data with your database so next auth is actually um, on top of whatever we are doing because it is providing the persistent solution also or you can implement your own so how to work in this scenario when you have an external api there is an external api which i already have because this was like the, the burning question which i had since couple of days let's say there is a nest js apis because if you do with the simple next auth it really works fine you write a next js application because how the application works and this is a server side routes and once the session is initialized you will have these adapters like you are you might be using prisma because it's all server side so you can also write a, a data fetch data save all these operations using prisma if you don't want to write an external api so this is all because it's server side so you don't need to write an additional layer of uh, having an api storing the data so here you just have uh, let's say the database is like uh, postgres or mysql right so server side api routes they will persist the data into the database and we are using might be using prisma type orm or all these things because type orm we are doing server side so you can get a type orm mysql database connections and can do read write operations so this is how the typical uh, next js 13 application works i mean there are some uh, changes which we can see in the next js 13 i have already covered a playlist okay what is all about 13 
there we are using app based directories writing client only components server side components and server side components have an access to the data layer so they can just use prisma type rm to read and write to the database so we already know that user is logged in server side has already the session exist because if we are using this next auth this solution then you are actually managing the solution so if we look at the getting started i will be talking about this in one of my application here we are managing the session and all the components which you are rendering will be getting the session from the next auth now next auth you can integrate with the custom providers like google facebook twitter or you can write your own uh, credentials this is how it is managing the session at the client side okay and at the server side like because what we can do we can also build our own apis right in the next js there are api routes we can add that will also you check if uh, the user session exists then only allow user to create these apis now the important thing is because this is ssr either you do it to the self kit or anything what we need to check okay the session exists at this client side because let's say i'm not using this approach for my apis i have a different uh, mechanism i have a independent nestjs api app which is doing authentication authorization everything so in that case how this is going to happen and for authentication either the you can do is what you will be doing the simplest solution i will talk about so let's say this is my next js app this is my server side api routes so you will send a request here and through your server side api routes you will send a request to your login apis by sending username and password because what we want is we want to have a cookie based session at these server side routes so those same cookies can be shared at the client side and how that will happen is you will send this username password to your actual authentication apis they will send you the token back to the server side api routes and then you will send the cookies you will set the cookies from the server side apis and send it to the client so now it is all about cookies based session and we are familiar with this because we don't deal with the local storage now at the server side there is nothing like local storage local storage only exists at the client cookies can be exchanged between the client and the server and this approach i have used in my projects before this next auth came into the picture next auth js so what this is doing is you are still uh, using your existing api sets which is doing uh, authentication and authorization what you are doing is at the server side you are still writing the api routes in the next js you can add a api routes so your front end components will hit the next js api routes those api routes will send a call to your actual next js apis and do the authentication and get the token once this is done once you got the the cookies you got the token then okay i can do something like this because i got the bearer token you can bypass this but initially session should be established with this because because we are managing the session at the server side using cookies it's not like uh, because ne it's next to js app every component is rendered through the server side and we are checking the sessions through that this is my own custom solution right but now there is a next auth what next auth is adding on top of this is lots of thing it has added so here what we are do doing is we added another layer that is next auth and i really like this solution because using this solution we are getting lot of uh, we we are get, we are getting rid of lots of complexity because otherwise authentication uh, or managing the session in the server side application is really not a good solutions all the different libraries which are provided by auth0 and all you have to go through each and every library okay how to do manage the session with auth0 how to manage the session with the firebase all these different libraries but next auth has adapters so here what i can do is i can create these uh, simple providers and adapters so this is my nsjs application this is uh, google this is github apis 
all the authentication is going to happen through these providers. Login with a Google, login with a GitHub, login with your custom solutions is a custom. This is a custom solution. If you want to authenticate using your Nest.js APIs, you need to provide your own custom provider. You need to create a custom provider. So here you can see getting started here. We are creating these uh, providers in the auth options. Similarly, let's say you are just using your username password based uh, based authentication and you wanted to use your own existing nest JS APIs then solution is little different than what you expect this is already provided by the next auth there are hello world examples you can play with them you can just log in with the github google and all you get the session and all this session because it's a next JS so all these sessions are shared among your server components and the client components that is already happening if you see the documentation how we are using the client APIs, like how we are capturing the sessions. If it is a React app, this is how we are getting the session using youth session. You don't need to do anything. Youth session will give you, okay, your session exists and what is the data. If you are using next auth, similarly, you can see on authenticated, if user is not authenticated, handle it here. And you can actually put this session provider in your root component app.tsx that will take care of uh, allowing you, you to access the public route and the private uh, route that we will do a demo and then we'll understand this is just like additional topic which i wanted to cover which talks mainly about authentication and today's we are do, doing lots of next js work or server side uh, framework work so i will give a simple application also in coming future we will build a small like airbnb or uh, udemy clone using next js and uh, next auth where we will be handling the authentication authorization with our own APIs, not by Google, GitHub and all, our own APIs. But we will be going through the next AuthJS library. Okay, so now let's see, these are the three solutions. Okay, there are many more solutions like if you are using Auth0, Auth0 provides uh, authentication with the Google, uh, with the Azure Active Directory and all, because those are enterprise solutions. Uh, and they really exist with either you are using a server side framework or the client side framework because with those solutions what happens is the only objective is using the client id like auth0 client id get the session token either you are using the next CS or the react app now that session token we can validate with our external apis okay let's the page so that's what we are doing to, uh, we are going to do here next auth is optional like let's say you are not going to use next auth you can simply use auth0 auth0 is also using auth protocol auth0 also allows you to log in with a good github google or any social provider azure active directory sso saml or anything and you can integrate auth0 with uh, the next js server side components right and then once you get the token by doing a login with the social providers, you will get the token and that token you can directly pass from your client component to your APIs. Okay, so it's going to be interesting series because I have seen lots of people talking about next auth, next auth, but they don't really talk about the authentication strategy and the really mechanism because it's all about getting the session at the client side. Now you can authorize that session against anywhere, but if you are getting the sessions using GitHub and Google, then next auth is powered to authorize your API calls. Then you cannot use. If you are building a custom solution, then only we can take this route. Okay. Now let's see our demo application, like how we are adopting this uh, strategy with our uh, simple application, which is React is the client side, and we are using Google uh, authentication, Google login uh, through our APIs, like the approach to this is what we are going to talk about. So let's start uh, some of our services and we run start dev. We need to start the proxy and we need to start our app, React app. Let's get this loaded. NPM run start because we need React app, we need proxy, and we need our uh, authentication APIs. So, what we are doing here is uh, we are doing a simple button. On the react app so over each react app and here you can see there is a sign-in component 
and what I'm doing, I'm just for the simple demo is this is sign in button, right? And here I'm trying to open the simple page. This is the second approach where you are clicking on to the sign in with the Google and take your request to the API route. So I'm going to hit HTTP get request to this API URL that is going through the proxy auth service auth Google, right? This is the proxy we have API given auth service auth Google. So it will take you there. We'll do the authentication and once the authentication is done, it will redirect you to 3000. So we are our 3001 is the API port. 3000 is your client side port, React application port. So I did some changes recently that I will cover. So this is simple login page, right? I think this was the page and I can just to go login with the Google. It's the same code which we have written here in the user service. We are using the Google controller. If you see inside auth, we are we have written this Google controller which has two routes. One is uh, auth guard and another is a callback which is handling the request coming from the Google with the after consent. Then we are generating the token. Here we got the data inside a request coming from the Google. We generated a token and we are setting the cookies and then redirecting response dot redirect to the client side page, a session page, welcome page where we can initialize the session. So here we will give a consent. Okay, I will allow you to log in and then it will redirect to the 3000 page. Currently, we are not handling the session at the client side. Like uh, once you get the cookies, call the APIs. You can see I got the session token and refresh token. And here I'm using HTTP only cookies. So they will be bind to the local host. And these cookies can be shared with the subdomains. Let's say your front end is on api.example.com that is the API and there is a ui.api.example.com that is your front end. So from APIs you can redirect to your front end page and they will share the cookies. Now the cookies is there. What we need to do is extract these cookies and send an API call to the user, initialize the user session, populate that in the Redux and show the user icon here with the profile icon and all. Right. So that is we are going to do in the next video. And now onwards, because now we are changing the strategy from the authorization header, we are going to send the session in the cookies to the APIs. So whatever the API services we have written, we just need to tweak a little bit. Instead of extracting it from the HTTP headers, we are going to extract the authorization bearer token from the cookies. Okay, that's a simple demo and it is using this second approach. Here we have created a simple button that is taking you to the API route, taking the consent and sending the data to the callback route. Callback route is extracting the data and creating the custom token and sending back the cookies using redirect to the front end page. Okay, this is all. Now let's, we are moving more on to the front end side. We will, now we will build a search page, landing page, restaurant landing page of allow a search and that will hit our search APIs that is going to get the data from the elastic container, elastic search container. And then we are going to build a simple shopping cart, simple cart because we have a cart service. So user keeps adding the menu items from the restaurant. We will add them to the cart and then delivery service, service and payment service, payment service. We will try to integrate with the Stripe based on the order ID. Okay. Uh, thanks everyone. Let's see you in the next video.